Fantasy Football 2012, Week 3 approaching, and some players to watch for. Dennis Pitta has led the Ravens in targets and receptions in both in the first two weeks. And he seems to be Joe Flacco's favorite target, and as of this week has been officially named the number one tight end in front of Ed Dixon. And for the Rams, Danny Amendola had a huge game last week. For the Patriots, Hernandez goes down with injury, which increases the value for receivers like Gronk and Welker. They did sign Kellen Winslow. He will be playing this week. However, I think uh, you, it's hard to say how much, how effective he'll actually be. And then for the Giants, Eli Manning threw for over 500 yards, nearly 400 of them to Cruz and Knicks. So yeah, those guys are still good. And then Bennett, however, was second on the team with uh, with 70 with over 70 yards and a touchdown and he has some value and that was the Sunday game and then if you look on the Thursday game against the Panthers he's been it scored another touchdown and this guy if this guy's actually available in your league pick him up I was shocked to see in one of my leagues he was available and I grabbed him good thing for me too he got another 13 points Eli Manning loves tight ends Oh, he came into the league with Shockey, and then when he left, Boss took over and became all pro. Boss goes to Oakland, and Ballard ends up becoming you know, this huge name. They lost him to wa waivers, and now they've got a t guy like Bennett. He, and he is a big target. I mean, seriously, that guy, guy is huge. He's like 10 feet tall, 500 pounds. I'm just kidding. I love hyperboles. But anyways, yeah. Eli Manning loves targeting his tight ends, and this guy is a good, a good tight end. He's got really great hands, and he is really easy to see. You can, Eli Manning can find him anywhere on the field. So if you, so if this guy is available, grab him. And at halfbacks, you know Fred Jackson injured. Daniel Thomas he got he got a concussion again. CJ Spiller and Reggie Bush have an increased workload and they used it. Uh, these guys have a lot of value and they will because of their explosiveness and even when the, uh, these other backs return from injuries they still have upside especially in the deeper leagues because they have so much versatility. And a surprising sleeper pick that I found out is Brandon LaFell. Um, I'd heard his name a few times last year, I think, uh, and I was actually shocked that he was available in so many of my leagues. Uh, two, he was still in, in free agency in two out of three leagues, and in week one he scored 12 points, in week two he scored 11, and in week three, you know, against the Panther, against the Giants, I'm sorry, he only had one catch for 27 yards. A bit disappointing, but still. He has been playing very well all season long, and he's looking like one of Cam's favorite targets right now. He's turning into a good possession receiver, so if you're hurting for a decent receiver and need a little bit more depth, go ahead and pick him up. In fact, he has more fantasy points this season than Jake Locker. A wide receiver with more fantasy points than a starting QB, that, you know, that gives you something to think about. You know, if you have Jake Locker on the team, your team, I am so sorry. <laughs> and uh, certain players losing value. Chris Johnson looks like a scrub right now. I don't even know what to say about this. I really don't. Um, he really doesn't have any excuse. Not not like he did last season. I mean, preseason he looked like he was back to normal, and he's just been disappointing owners all year so far. And. And Run DMC and Larry Fitzgerald have both been such tremendous disappointments to their fantasy owners. And one, well, with Steve, with Larry, it's a little easier to explain. You know, for some reason, Ke Kevin Cobb just doesn't like to throw to him. And receiver's the hardest position to play. You have to depend on your quarterback getting you the ball. Larry's got the hands to come down with anything that comes his way, but he just hasn't been thrown to yet. He's got less than seven points through two weeks. And then Darren McFadden, you know, he's actually managed to stay healthy, but they're not using him for some reason. He hasn't been 
getting too involved. He hasn't been making a lot of big plays. I really don't know what I really don't know what's wrong with this guy. It's it's kind of hard to explain with with the McFadden and Johnson. You just kind of have to hope that they get back on track. And with Fitzgerald, you just kind of have to hope that Cobb gets injured and Skelton comes back in because Skelton loves throwing to Fitzgerald. And Stephen Jackson of the Rams has yet to get a hundred yards. He has yet to find the end zone. He is apparently dealing with an injury. He, this guy is a great player, and it's. I wonder what his career would have been if he was playing for a team that actually had an offensive line. You know, but you know, it's it's hard to go against him. On the same time, be very wary. He is no longer considered a must start. And he is no longer considered like a high draft pick. If you ha if he's available in like fifth or sixth round, grab him. But second or third to be your number one halfback, not worth it. And Jeremy Macklin is still a top receiver in the league. If he plays, he's pretty much a must start. But he's feel dealing with a few different injuries right now. So you should have a quality guy ready. Because we can't be certain that Macklin will actually be able to participate in all 16 games last year. Heard all preseason, played in week one, beasted. Played in week two, only had one catch, but it was in the end zone. Uh, we'll, he's already been rolled out for week three, though. And we, can't, we don't know for sure when he's coming back. And the Browns' defense allowed 34 points in week two. So, but... They were without Joe Hayden, and it definitely affected their pass defense. But they still managed to grab six sacks and a pick. Uh, just if you're just struggling to find a good defense, just keep your eyes on these. The Browns have a lot of sleeper potential. They've got a better offense, so that defense will be on the field less. And you know, the and their defense, when it does get on the field, they can make plays. And then also, just to finish off this to this week's episode, Michael Turner got arrested for DUI after Monday's night's game. Like, a few hours after they beat the Broncos, he got arrested for DUI. But, according to the reports, because he is a first-time offender, he's not going to face any uh, discipline for the moment. Play him as you normally would. But keep an eye out for this stuff because, you know, if he does do something like this again, he is subject to, to league, to, he is subject to league discipline, could be fines and suspensions, stuff like that. Well, this has been Fantasy Football with the Fan Perspective. Tune in Tuesday for reflections on week three. And good luck to you with all of your games. I know how hard it can be. Uh... I hope I helped.